through uh, the process for uh, doing these chemistry of the water tests. And uh, it's, it's a, there are four tests that we run. Uh, we run them in the order in which they are written up on this uh, color sheet. We're going to test for pH. We're going to test for ammonia. We're going to test for nitrite. And we're going to test for nitrate. Don't get the two confused. There are two different tests that sound very similar, nitrite and nitrate. So what we start with is to uh, unpack the kit, uh, set up test tubes in this little test tube holder so that we can do them in order. Uh, I have already filled three of the test tubes and I'm going to show you how to fill the test tube. So we use this little pipette that uh, will allow us to get, get water from the tank without putting the test tube in the tank. So I reach up and I suck up water from the tank and just put it in the test tube. And what I'm doing is getting that water up to the white line that's in the center of the test tube, more or less. And when I get to the white line, I want to look very carefully because what I want to have is that the lower portion of this, what is called the meniscus, it's the, um, the surface of the water has a bit of a curve to it, and the lower low point of that meniscus is to line up with the white line. So you have to look very carefully and sometimes you have to add just a tiny little bit of water to bring that a drop will make a difference. And I think we are good on all of those. So <clears throat> I can set my pipette aside. Uh, we are starting with clean, dry test tubes. It's important to do that. If, just take a look at them. Uh, I generally like to rinse them out ahead of time. Uh, but we'll start with our pH test. And the way we open the bottle is to hold the red tab with our thumb and just unscrew. That, that's a, uh, a locking mechanism so that it's a safety cap. Uh, putting the, the test solution into the test tube it's best to hold the, 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 the bottle straight up and down and right on top of the test tube and count out on the, the number of drops that you're going to add. On the front of the bottle, the, the number of drops that you need to add is printed right there in a little black drop. Uh, for the high range, it's five drops. So I'm going to turn this straight up and down, count them out. One, two, three, four, five and lift it straight up. By lifting it straight up, it uh, avoids the possibility of having a drop run down the side of the test tube that you really don't intend. And then I put the cap right back on there, put it back in the holder, cap it with the plastic cap, lift it out of the, hold, the test tube holder here, and then agitate this for about five seconds. That, that's one test is now ready to read, but I typically go on and do all four tests, and then we'll come back and read them all one in succession. Our second uh, test is the ammonia test. Hold the red tab, twist off the top, count how many drops I'm going to add, eight drops for this test. And there are two different solutions used in the ammonia test, bottle number one and bottle number two, and you use bottle number one first. We're going to count out eight drops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Lift it straight out. Cap the bottle. Come back and do test bottle number two. Again, eight drops. This one, we can add the drops directly after the first uh, test bottle number two can be added directly after test bottle number one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Lift it straight out. And we're going to cap that test tube with the plastic cap. Keep your finger on top of the cap is a good idea. You should shake this one vigorously for five seconds. So 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005. Then we have to wait five minutes for the color to develop on this test tube. So we go on and do our next test, which is nitrite. 
nitrate is a, a single test solution that we add, and we're going to add five drops into our, our test tube. One, two, three, four, five. That came out pretty quickly. So, and it looks like some was already under the cap, so we may want to run that one twice if we get something that's really alarming in a result. And that one needs to be shaken for five seconds also. Four, one thousand, five. And we wait five minutes for that one for the color to develop. And then our last test is nitrate. This is a two bottle test, two solution test. Bottle number one, bottle number two. It's very important that bottle number two be shaken for one minute before you add this solution into the test tube. And I've already shaken this ahead, but shake that vigorously for one full minute. Okay, I have already done that. I'm not going to do it as part of this test. Uh, this one, we add 10 drops. Again, it's in the little black dot on the front. Open it. And we're going to add that one. This one's a cool test because it makes a really nice color. We're going to count out 10 drops. One, two, three, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Lift it straight out. On this one, we actually will agitate it between the two chemicals that we add. So we're going to agitate that one gently for five seconds. That just mixes it around for five. And then we lift the cap back on. Be careful not to get this solution on your fingers. If you do, it's not really extremely dangerous, but at the end of running the test, you want to wash your hands and dry them well. Then we add test solution number two, 10 drops, straight up and down, right down on the test tube. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and lift that out, cap it off, put the cap back on, and agitate that one vigorously for one full minute. You have to time that. Okay, I'm just finishing up my one minute of shaking. We took a little break in the filming, but that one has been shaken for one minute and that one goes back in the rack and now we have to wait five minutes for that so the the advantage of doing these all in a row like this is that it takes about five minutes to run through all of these to do these tests so that this test that we did for the ammonia is now ready to be read i don't know if you can notice that but you can if you look back at what color that was when we first started it was a much paler color and the color has developed over that period of time so our reading of our tests is done by taking the test tube with the solution that has the test chemicals in it and holding it up against this card and looking at the color and comparing it and deciding which one is the closest. Uh, we have used the high range pH and we always use high range pH on our tests uh, and we compare that and I believe this one is probably in the range of 8 to 8.2. I don't know if that shows, shows up well on the video, but that's what it looks like to me. It's sometimes it's a little difficult to, to arrive at a, a final number, and I'm just checking. Yes, this one has been developing for five minutes. And we are at, I'm looking carefully at that, holding the, holding the test tube in front of the white background. It looks to me like it's at about one is the, is the uh, value there. Okay, go on. Okay. Our next one is the nitrite, and I'm going to compare that with the color chart. And it looks like we are maybe at two parts per million. So when you, when you read these values, you want to compare them with the, what's a, a recommended range and what's considered safe for the fish. On this particular tank, we're getting readings that are a little high 
uh, a little bit on the high side, particularly for the nitrite. Ammonia should be less than one part per million. Uh, pH should be between 7.4 and 8.0. Nitrite should be near zero. And nitrate, which is our last one here, should be somewhere less than 40 parts per million. And this one looks pretty good. This one's in the 10 to 20 range. It's really kind of hard on nitrate to determine because actually a lot of these on the card look very similar. So all of these are within an acceptable range, but uh, the ammonia is getting up on the high side. So if you see something that's out of the normal range, be sure and tell your teacher, and your teacher can help you run the test again to double check on that, and if it's really out of range, then there needs to be some corrective action taken, or at least monitoring what's going on to make sure it's not toxic to the fish.